Hey, Idalsi here, and in this video, I'm going to do a quick overview of what Flow School is. And in a separate video, I'm going to go into the nitty gritty details about the structure. For now, we're just going to kind of top level, like, what are we here to do? What's the point of this program? And the first question I want to ask is, who is this school and this program for? And whether you're a pure beginner or you're already experienced in speaking with people, Flow School has something to offer for you. What we're specifically looking at is people who have any of these issues. Um, you can't understand fast, blurry, native speech. You can't follow along. You don't know enough vocabulary to kind of enter into conversation and make say something. Um, or maybe you do know vocabulary, but whenever you're in conversation, you draw a blank. You're not able to access that vocabulary. Or maybe you overthink things. You're kind of conjugating in your head, even when you're listening, trying to translate, and you get lost once again. You can't follow along for that reason. Um, or maybe your pronunciation is not up to par, you're not satisfied with your accent, maybe you're self-conscious about it, and all this might lead up to you getting nervous, socially anxious in conversation, and kind of freeze up and not contribute, not actually speak, not hear anything if you have that issue. Or maybe you, um, you just struggle on a logistical front, like you can't find conversation partners or maybe you true you do find some but they're kind of weird and creepy you don't know what to do about that or you got some decent ones but you don't know how to get the most out of the interaction out of the conversation for for proper practice um and maybe you're you have a tight schedule or you have an open schedule but in either case you don't know what is an effective routine for you to practice so you can you know make the best use of your time and not be wasting time on like you know apps and other kind of wasteful activities um, and maybe you've been learning and studying for a long time, but you feel stuck, plateaued at the same level. If any of these issues resonate with you, then I designed this school to help you deal with it. What I call these are all the blocks that are blocking you from entering flow into a conversation. So in general, this program is for anyone who struggles to enter flow in spoken conversation. All right. If that's you, then listen on. So first, I use this term flow a lot. What am I referring to? It's an actual thing. It's a scientifically studied phenomena. It's um, these images you have on the screen, playing piano, dancing, surfing, sports, you know, study, gardening. In each of these activities, a person can become completely immersed in the activity and enter what they call flow state. And that's what I'm referring to when I talk about flow. It's... Um, it's a, once again, a scientifically studied phenomenon. We can look at it neuroanatomically, neuroelectrically, neurochemically. Um, but in terms of the experience, um, the way you can think about it is there's a sense of um, selflessness. You, you lose self-consciousness and awareness of like who you are and like your ego and all that kind of stuff. Um, time kind of morphs and you know things kind of go slowly, but also time passes very quickly as well. Um, things are effortless, right? When you're flowing in the activity, you're not struggling and trying just kind of intuitively coming out of you your your skill and your performance and the experience itself will be very high intensity high richness high color um this is a peak experience flow state it's called peak experience and your action and your in the moment and your awareness of your surroundings kind of emerge together without having to think about anything and all in all it creates a kind of deep sense of meaning both within the moment and also when you come out of flow people report higher levels of happiness and meaning in life as a result of their time spent in the flow state whatever that flow activity might be right when i say flow i'm also referring to this phenomenon of progressing upward in an activity in a skill so on this chart here you see that you know if you're doing something that's too difficult you can get frustrated and even anxious so you're in a conversation maybe and you can't follow along because it's just too quick as anxiety or it's too easy. You're doing the same sentences, the same, you know, challenge over and over again and it gets boring. Right. But the flow channel is right in between those spaces where your skill matches the challenge at hand. And when you're in that state, you're in the flow state. And when you stay in that state, your skill increases. So the difficulty has to increase along with it. So flow is also referring to that kind of balance of skill match over time. Um, so you're staying continuously engaged, no boredom, no frustration, no anxiety, um, and you're continually progressing. So no more of that stagnation or degeneration. Now, talking about flow in the context of conversation with um, one or more other people, 
Um, what I'm speaking about there is that those types of conversations you have, target language or not, you know, in English or your first language, when you're with somebody and you're you're not anxious or worrying about things, it's not kind of <laughs> awkward or it's not boring, you're not checking the clock, um, you're not kind of annoyed or frustrated or confused or interrupted all the time or discomforted or uncomfortable in the situation, you know, when you're not in that state and instead you just have this effortless communication between you and the other person um, and you're deeply engaged in the moment, in the person, in the people, and it feels very meaningful, those flowing conversations. And while you're in conversation flow, you're, as an individual, the you expand your heart, you expand your mind, you expand your sense of meaning. Um, and then also in between individuals, it's conversation flow is a primary way that we actually strengthen our bonds with other people. So once again, look to your own life, like maybe when you met your romantic partner and you had your first date and things just kind of flow or when you're hanging with your best friend, just laughing, having a good time and like four hours go by, like fun, enjoyable, engaging, meaningful, deep. This is flow in the context of having conversation with another person. So if you want to enter conversation flow in your target language, then you have to remove the things that are blocking you from entering that. That's the main thing I want to get across in this presentation. If you want to enter conversation flow, you have to remove your conversation blocks, right? And that goes back to the things we discussed earlier on that list. Those are all blocks that are blocking you from getting into conversation flow, right? So that's what we're here to do in flow school is remove those things. Um, and before I get into how we do that, I want to tell you a bit about myself and why you might you know, want to put your lot in with me to help you do this. So um, I personally flow in seven languages, including English. Uh, first, I learned Spanish. Then I went to China and learned Chinese. Then I went to Brazil and Brazilian Portuguese. Then I went to Quebec and learned French. And then Germany and learned German. Uh, spent a week in Italy and did a quick Italian mission. And, um, and then also other variations of each of these languages, like European Portuguese or, you know, Parisian French, whatnot. Um, so I, I flow in all these things, which is to say that I'm able to have conversations and speak the way I'm speaking to you right now and express myself and experience that depth of flow. Um, my expertise particularly is in accent and pronunciation. We'll talk about that more in a moment, but that's what I'm known for in the general kind of polyglot language learning community. Um, I'm also a musician. My techniques are based on my experience playing violin as a kid up into adulthood, uh, public speaker, performer, storyteller, all these things all wrapped into my methodology as why I'm mentioning it here. And of course, I'm the founder of this new method program founded 10 years ago. And since then, I've helped unblock tens of thousands of language learners like yourself from around the world in a variety of different languages using our programs and techniques. So I want to tell you guys my origin story for how I learned my first foreign language in nine emojis. All right, real quick. So uh, I'm actually at my parents' house right now visiting, and this is my childhood bedroom that I'm in. I grew up in in Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, suburban. Um, love my family, love my friends, uh, but just being in suburbia, I didn't find very interesting, very you know, dynamic and exotic. And I always had this you know, idea to go out and travel the world whenever I could. So when I was uh, 17, I got the opportunity to travel and study abroad in Mexico. And I was super excited to go to this new culture, um, you know, see new things. I got there, had a host family, was at a language school, and everything was brand new and novel. And like young 17 year old was super fun, super exciting at the very beginning. But as I was there longer, um, you know, after a week or so, it was kind of starting to get difficult for me. Why? Because I wasn't able to understand anything going on around me. I wasn't able to express myself. I would get stuck. Um, I didn't have the words. My mind would draw a blank. All those things we mentioned already. I couldn't do any of these things. And because I'm immersed in this culture, um, it's very frustrating because I can't get stuff done. I can't express myself. People don't know who I am. Meanwhile, I'm going to class and I'm doing well in the classes. I'm learning all the grammar. I'm acquiring all this vocabulary, getting good grades on my tests. But still, when I go out into the streets or I go back home to my host family, I'm not able to flow with them. I'm not able to converse or communicate. And I kept trying and banging my head against the wall, but I wasn't seeing any progress. And over time, it started kind of getting very kind of like 
desperate in anguish. You know, I'm 17 years old. It was my first time being in a foreign place. I'm not able to communicate with anyone. Um, and I remember at one point I got really bad and I got like really lonely and like kind of dejected, lost. I'm sitting here just, you know, alone in this crowd of Mexicans, not, not feeling disconnected and alienated from everybody. Um, and I almost gave up on the whole process. I thought something was wrong with me. I'll never learn Spanish. And then um, one day, and I don't know where this came from, it's kind of an idea came to me. And I was like, you know what? I've been studying this grammar and these books very hard. Uh, what if I just kind of forget about that for a moment? And instead, I'll just focus on really trying to look and feel and sound like a Mexican. So before I'd go to a restaurant and I'd you know, order food and I'd be like a... Puedo tener más uh, guacamole con mis tacos, por favor? And I would say the words, you know, the way I learned them, the way it kind of came to me as my American English. Um, I'm like, you know what? I can do better. Let me like really try to sound like a Mexican. Let me put on my best Antonio Banderas impersonation, you know, telenovela. And then I'd sit there and I'd be like, Puedo tener más guacamole con mis tacos, por favor? Right? And really over-dramatizing it and all that kind of stuff and just having fun with it. Um, but at the same time, taking it seriously. Like I would really study these like TV shows and videos and be like, oh, I don't sound exactly the same. I'm not quite getting it. Look at the face, look at the body gestures, watch Mexicans in the street and how they operated. And I just tried to enter into character and become one of the Mexicans in all my, not necessarily the words and grammar, that's all the same. Just the way I performed it, I wanted to sound more like that. So after about like two weeks, really focusing on fine tuning and imitating and mimicking the Mexicans, all of a sudden the language and the whole world started to show up completely different to me, right? Um, I found myself in conversation, used to be like, oh, I can't follow along. I'm like, wait a minute, I know everything this person's saying right now and I'm not translating it in my head. I can just feel it. I just know what this guy's saying. And then like I start to speak and I'm like, uh, sí, porque hay mucha gente que está pasando. Like, Whoa. And then like Spanish was just flowing out of me without me even like thinking about it. I kind of like step aside and look at myself and I'm like, that, is that, you speak Spanish? What's, right. And, uh, and I was like, Whoa. And then very quickly and very rapidly, I unblocked and unlocked all of this experience in me after living in the country for like a month or two. And boom, by the time I left there, I was flowing. I was fluent. I had a Mexican girlfriend. I'm hanging out with my Mexican host brothers, like cracking jokes, or everybody's laughing. And that experience of going from being alienated, being a foreigner, and then moving slowly into being familiar through the process of paying attention and imitating, mimicking my surroundings, that process I fell in love with. And I repeated it multiple times, like I said already, in China and Brazil, Germany, etc. And in those future repetitions, I started to formulate this process and understanding of why I wasn't succeeding before and why everyone else is not succeeding in learning a language and what I was doing differently that led to my success. So let's cover that right now to understand why I or yourself or anyone else is not succeeding in flowing in a, far, in a target language. It's because the conventional method approaches it like this. Think back to your first day of Spanish class, French class, whatever it is. What do you learn? How to spell and the theory and the rules of grammar. This is a conjugation chart, you know. This is the stem, AR verbs get conjugated in present tense, subjunctive, indicative mood, multiply by three, divide by pi. All that stuff is what we start off with, right? And then, you know, this is the accent mark. This is how you make this letter. This is how you make this Chinese character. That's the, the initial focus. And then once you have those rules of spelling and grammar memorized, you start to translate reading text. through. So you learn how to read, learn how to write, and um, you just keep doing this translation process over and over again. And if you stay with it, you know, any app you do, like a Duolingo or any textbook you go through a program, if you stay with it, you will develop a decent literacy ability, right? It's not that difficult to, to develop that skill. Um, just have to put in the work. And then the idea in the conventional method is that once you have that, you can now take it into conversation. And the same way you translate it on a paper, now all you got to do is translate in real time in a conversation. And that's when you focus on listening and speaking. And then the idea is that once you finally are able to be fluent in the language, 
if you want to as a nice cherry on top extra credit bonus you can really start to fine-tune your accent and sound more like the people right but no one really gets to that stage they don't take it that seriously they don't put too much time in it at all on the front end right this is the conventional method and whether you're doing a duolingo or a textbook or any other app or program for the most part with very few exceptions this is what every single language program is doing right and this approach is a top down approach we start with the most abstract concepts of spelling and grammar and then work our way down into the physical components of hearing and pronunciation right now once again what this produces, as we know, is lots of blocks. Most people don't succeed and achieve conversational fluency. Very few, very, like I think like less than 3% of people uh, report being fluent in a language, um, as a second language. So um, first one, can understand fast speech, right? You're, you can read it on a page, but then in conversation, it just all blurs, one blur, you can't follow along. You ask somebody like, what you say? They repeat it slow and enunciated, like, you know, you have some mental defect. And then you're like, oh, we'll write that down. Oh, that word. I know that word. Why couldn't I hear that word, right? Once again, very common outcome of the conventional method. Um, or you're in conversation, you have a thousand vocabulary words in your flashcard decks, but they don't come to mind. You blank out. You can't think of anything in the moment when you need it, right? Or you're, you do have some words, but you're conjugating them and like, you know, doing all kinds of math calculations on them in your head which is too slow right you have to be fast in conversation i can't be doing math in my head while i'm trying to follow along with a guy who's like screaming at me about something right um and then of course that dissatisfaction with the accent we treat it like an extra credit bonus but the truth is we're talking about socialization here and people get self-conscious right you know you come and you have a very strong accent people will treat you differently and you will feel that and you will feel less confident in your speech and then that will all create this vicious cycle in your head where you get anxious and self-conscious and then that freezes you up you say more mistakes you know everyone knows what i'm talking about there right and that's where you get nervous and you freeze up so this conventional top-down approach that we all are forced to go through from our from our traditional schooling it obviously doesn't work so what if we do the complete opposite instead of top down we come at it bottom up, right? This is what the mimic method does. We start in the body. We start by fine tuning your ears and your mouth and your pronunciation, your eyes and imitating so you can enter into the movement flow of the people you're trying to communicate with. And then through that, you start to emerge the meaning out of those movements through the act of listening and speaking and putting everything within context. And then once you have that basic speaking ability, then you can refine it by, you know, reading and writing and becoming more literate and refined in that way. Um, and then at the very end, if you want to, though you don't really need to, this is the extra credit, you can kind of look at the rules of grammar and for an intellectual curiosity. Um, and that would be, oh, that's interesting. I always knew that intuitively, but now I kind of know the general rule. But think about it, you'll know grammar in English for the most part, right? So you don't need it to be conversion fluent. It's an extra credit. This is the bottom up approach, starting from physical reality and then working our way up to the more abstract, right? Now, when I say the mimic method, in one sense, I'm referring to the name of the methodology I came up with, but really I'm referring to the methodology of humanity, right? All humans learn language through the mimic method, right? So when we're all babies, we sit here and we listen and pay attention to our surroundings and we mimic the movements of the people in our environment. I have a niece right now, I can see her. She's just watching like, right? She's doing gibberish because she's practicing pronunciation, right? Then through that, they start to kind of play and explore the environment and learn to converse, listen, and speak. A five-year-old, a six-year-old can speak fluently, right? I bet you would love to speak your target language as fluent as a six-year-old, right? One who has not yet gone to kindergarten or learned how to read and write yet. Then when you're in school, we take the language you already know and speak, and we figure out how to encode that into letters and how to write. Uh, and then, you know, high school, we learn grammar and stuff, but no one actually learns it, no one remembers it. So this is the natural process of learning. The mimic method is not my invention, it's the human invention, okay? So now that we got that, let's take the practicalities. How do you remove your blocks in your target language? Well, 
what we do in our program in the flow school is we take natural speech, not this kind of slowed down baby talk that they put in other programs, but we take real fast, blurry, natural speech, which is too much for you to deal with at first, unless we stretch it out, slow it down, break it down into its component parts. And then we use this musical repetition process to entrain each of these parts into your ear. So at first it seems foreign, but after a while you familiarize yourself with it and then it starts to kind of catch and flow into your mind. And then once you have all these slow down parts, um, you know, entrained into you, then we build them back up piece by piece. Then we slowly increase the speed back up to full speed. So I can take a phrase in Spanish like, ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? Right? And then I can slow it down. ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? And then I can break it down into its syllables. ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? And then I can extract out the melody. Right? All these things you do in our program, and you learn how to catch each one. And you practice it, you shape your mouth to it, you shape your ear to it, and after a moment, you get it slow, and you're like, ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? A little bit faster. ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? A little bit faster. ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? Full speed. ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? ¿Dónde está? And we use music the whole time so you really get into it, fall into that trance, turn on that right hemisphere of your brain, activate the whole thing. Um, in the other video, you'll see it firsthand, you'll know what I'm talking about, right? Same thing with your mouth, your ear and your mouth are interconnected. So the problem with language is that you can't see your articulators the same way you would see your fingers or your, your in a piano class, or your feet in a dance class. So in our program, we give you diagrams and you know you get a pocket mirror and a camera and like look at your own mouth so you can visualize your instrument. And then we have these drills and exercises that help you develop a precise control over your tongue, over your lips, over your jaw. Um, and then once again, the same process, slow it down, break it down and train it, build it up, speed it up to keep doing that process over and over again. And you'll be amazed at how quickly and how thoroughly you can entrain the flow of natural foreign language speech, which shows up to you as a complete blur. At first you do this process is in you, it's locked in and those parts that we're in training, right? So I, I mentioned before we have the syllables, those, you know, donde esta la? We break those down into what's called phonemes. Like that, what I'm talking about there, the phonemes. Um, rhythm, that's a. That's rhythm, you get stress, timing, the movement of the pitch we already, we already covered as well. This is what you're training. These are the parts of speech. Um, same thing. Training your tongue, you have your tongue, uh, your lips, bah, 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 your jaw, uh, uh, and your palate, uh, 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 that's in the back of your throat. And also your diaphragm, breath, getting the air out of you, and your vocal cords. Uh, these are the parts, right? So one slide, I've broken down all the parts of speech. And notice how we never train these in a conventional approach, but in our program in flow school, you're going to train your ear and your mouth to capture each of these parts and become fluent with them so you can build it back together and go to full speed, all right? So what we're doing here, a good metaphor to think about what we're doing in this first part of flow school is we're tuning your senses and your body, your motor sensory system to clearly receive the signal of your language and to clearly transmit the signal. So the flow, there's a throughput flow coming in and out of you. When you enter into an environment, you can receive. If you're blocked, you can't do this. this the language comes in, bounces off, you know, you try to speak, but it's, it's not the right radio signal. It's a different, you know, don't they stir a biblioteque, right? That's what's going on, right? Notice when you're on a radio and you're not on the right station, What's it sound like? Today at the we're going to right. That's analogous to what it's like listening to your target language prior to doing this fine tuning to get at the right station, so you can get a clear signal. This is what Flow School is doing in the beginning part, right? What we're doing in the beginning part is we're training you to become a mimic. 
right? So what does that mean? Quite simple. In your target language, you're going to have the ability to walk into any scenario. Somebody says something like a short phrase, you know, they're like, blah, 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 blah. And then you hear it and then you accurately perceive it, receive the signal, and then you can accurately transmit and reproduce the same signal, blah, 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 right? This is all it is. When you can mimic, then you have the foundation to learn rapidly. But once again, in the conventional method, they don't train you on this, so you're always alienated and separated and shut off from the language. So once you have that mimicry ability, that first thing we train you on is imitation. And we do that through these different exercises, but also we give you a repertoire of songs and scripts in the language that you can kind of access um, to really take in the spirit. You know, we have like, you know, Cuando la gente se muere, se dice que era tan buena. Or French. Alors, qui dit étude, dit travail, qui dit taf, te dit l'étude. Right, we have these, this repertoire of songs that kind of lives inside of you. This is the spirit of the language. Um, and once you have this repertoire imitated, then the next step is invention. Invention is we take these pieces and then we start to reshuffle them around and you start to invent and create your own expressions using these things, right? So we practice in a kind of um, theater setting um, or a musical setting as well. We practice inventing phrases and developing your capacity to generate meaning, which also influences your ability to process and understand it. Um, and then finally, improvisation is the end goal. Right now, I'm improvising, right? You know, I know this material, but I didn't write a script. I'm just speaking out to you. That's what you do every single day in your first language. You're just improvising in the moment. To flow, you need to have things so deeply ingrained that you can improvise, but you have to practice the act of improvising. So in flow school, uh, our exercises and our group meetups are designed to help you develop these skills. Then, once you're able to do that, and you, you leave the practice arena and you go out into the field, and there, you go on your adventure, your personal adventure, for whatever, why ever you're trying to learn this language, we help you formulate a plan, go out there and find native speakers in the real world, and then you play skill-matched, flowing conversation games with them. What that means is most people go into conversation with no plan, and then it's way too difficult, and they go to the anxiety level of the flow curve. Um, we help you design the conditions and constraints for your conversation, so that you're able to enter into that flow channel, play at a level that matches your skill and be fine and engaged and actually learning in the process. Then um, there's a routine to this. So we have a system that you follow that helps you methodically improve your efficacy of communication, the speed and the smoothness, and then the precision and the quality of your thing. So you know exactly where you stand, what you need to improve. Um, and then you come back each conversation with a field report. So you know, I talked to this person, um, this worked out for me, this didn't work out for me. Um, I learned these new things, I'm a, I applied this technique and got these results, right? So it's very structured and methodical. Um, not, you, we do all the thinking for you, you just need to set the plan, go in there and have your conversation and then come back and report. Um, and then finally, you keep doing this until you expand out into more and more contexts. At first, it's just introducing yourself, talking about your life. Then maybe it's um, speaking about work. Then maybe it's going to some type of event, some type of professional organization. Whatever your personal life is, you keep expanding out the different conversational contexts until eventually something synthesizes and then you can flow and improvise in any context, even brand new ones. This is what fluency really means, right? So this is the journey. We take you from the practice arena where you're imitating, inventing, and improvising to out there in the real world in your adventure where you're taking a routine and getting better and better and better over time and expanding your mastery. So the pillars of Flow School, what we provide for you to do these things, um, the path. First and foremost, we have our curriculum, linear, step-by-step. -step. Uh, you follow these exercises, you do these activities. Um, and you will acquire each of the component skills you need to flow in proper order one by one. The practice arena, we have our online platform where you do the training. You'll see that in the other video. Um, then we also have Zoom meetups. We meet regularly for you to practice with um, your peers and exchange support and ideas as well. Then there's the field, you know, your own life. You go out there and find your conversations. 
and then you come back and submit field reports, right? So it's a structured way for you to know why you're going out there and what to come back with. Then the community is there to give you tips and emotional support. Um, we meet in an online forum as well as a Zoom meetup, so you meet people in live. Um, and then accountability as well as a major part of this program. So we have this pretty uh, sophisticated system that balances competition and cooperation where we put you into small groups each week and your groups meet up, set a plan for each other, hold each other accountable. And then you, you submit your work when you get it done and get points based on that. And then you're competing with other teams. So every day the scoreboard updates and then you win prizes and you know personal consultations with me and kind of stuff each time um, your team wins. So that is the accountability piece is super effective. In the first flow school, like, you know, if you're a very, um, if you're not competitive, then working with other people, cooperating will motivate you. If you are competitive, then you'll be motivated. So it really maximizes motivation and gets the stuff done and then you get results. Um, and then finally guidance. So we'll be doing uh, these kind of lecture seminars. I'll be speaking to you as I am right now on a weekly basis, taking questions from people in office hours. Um, and then also we have a series of, I'm, I'm bringing on a couple of apprentices to help me uh, attend to people's needs and, and whatnot as well. So that is the Flow School program, the basic program. If you're interested, there's also a VIP coaching program that you can add on and integrate with this. In that, you'll get direct access to me in a 30-minute coaching call I'll do each week where I will you know, very qu uh, closely fine-tune your pronunciation. That's my main expertise. And also help you think through your general language learning problems, your difficulties, um, so it's both a general coaching as well as a very specific one for pronunciation and speaking. Then um, you can be sure that you're getting things right in these exercises because twice a week you'll get a chance to send us a recording of yourself doing certain activities based on what we're learning that week. And then um, we will tell you precisely what you're mispronouncing, what you're mishearing, what you're not doing properly um, and get feedback so you can keep adjusting yourself and, and make sure you're getting things right. Uh, also, we will custom tailor a learning plan for you. So each week, um, I'll look at how you're progressing, what your deficits are. Um, you'll also let me know what is your schedule that week with work, family, other responsibilities, you know, and we can look at, I got this many hours of work and I'm like, cool, based on where you're at right now, the best way to use your time is to do this, you know, do this in the morning, do this in the evening. And um, so you don't have to think about that either. You just have to follow the plan and get the results. Um, and the next cool thing we're doing here is we're, I wanna make materials that are relevant to your life. So we have the general materials in the program, uh, but take your favorite songs. Um, when we get to the conversation practice stage and you have to make little scripts introducing yourself, we'll help you prepare those, help you practice those and make audio lessons to help you train those as well. So um, bespoke content specifically for your personal life. One issue with general language programs, you know, you learn words that don't mean anything to you. It's like, oh, this is what the word for accounting is. And you're like, well, I'm not an accountant, right? Uh, it has to be relevant to your life. So we help you make learning materials relevant to your life to accelerate your progress, right? So to final wrap up here, what are some common concerns that I get from people when they consider doing our programs? I often hear people say, my ears aren't good enough. And that's true, they're not good enough. And the reason they're not good enough is because no one trained them. The conventional teachers didn't train you, you didn't train your ears, and that's why you're here in flow school. Once you train your ears, your ears will be good enough. The only reason why my ears are good is because I trained them, right? Nothing's good until you train them. So yes, your ears aren't good enough, but they will be way better than the average person's by the end of this program. My memory isn't good enough, uh, it's a very common misconception of language that it's like a memory game, like I'm memorizing the, memorizing the 50 states and their capitals or something. That's not how it works. I'm not doing a memory bank for my English words right now. It's flowing out of me. So in our training, uh, it's embodied. You're, you're, you're practicing, you're using, you're drawing on real experience. So it's not memory, it's just flow. So if you have that sense about yourself, um, it's probably based off of experiences in your, in your schooling that are not relevant to what we're doing here. Um, we often hear from people think, oh, maybe I'm too old and that's why my ears aren't good enough. My memory isn't good enough. 
uh, we've had lots of people um, in the golden age do our programs. And once again, you can you can learn at any age. And this really keeps you sharp as well, I find. And, um, and you know, we even have people who have like hearing loss, um, listening, um, like problems, like congenital hearing loss and whatnot. And they get benefit out of this program. Because once again, no matter where you're at, with the right type of training, you can get way better. And that's all that matters, right? I've always been bad at languages. A lot of times we have these um, identities that were grafted onto us from uh, negative experiences in school when we were kids. Once again, this is not your high school Spanish program. This is not your high school language program. Very different. Um, a lot of people who struggled in an academic context thrive here because we're dealing with real life and activity and not just that kind of very left brain academic way of doing things. That's not what we do here. So leave that identity at the door. We're in a whole different game here. We'll focus on getting you more confident. I'm a visual learner. That's great. So am I. One misconception is that because we focus so much on music and sound and ear um, that we're only for people who are auditory. Um, well, the first thing is that language is auditory. There's no way around that. So you have to learn these things anyways. Second, what visual learning means basically is that you can use visual guides to make sense of things. And that's what we do in our program. We give you diagrams so you can visualize your mouth, visualize your tongue movement in it. I'm very visual. Um, make lots of graphs, lots of things that kind of show the relationship between things. So if you're a visual learner, then more power to you. This program is even better for you. Uh, I'm an introvert. Maybe I'm shy. Uh, totally sympathize and get you on that. And um, I understand the struggle. The Once again, though, the issue is that we actually have to go out and speak with people. So no matter how you shake it, interaction with people is what language learning is about fundamentally. Uh, but once again, the good news is we design our practice arena as a safe space for you to kind of get the skills, get the scripts. Much of what we do here is based on my experience helping people train up their social confidence, uh, developing my own social confidence as I traveled the world and learned languages and learned and met brand new people. So, you know, no matter how much social anxiety you have, once again, socializing is a skill and we train that skill here independent of uh, the language itself. Just how do you interact with people and prepare for social situations to be more confident in them. If you're a pure beginner, worry not. You're getting a nice clean start. You're learning the natural way from the beginning. So we're going to get you your imitation, your mimicry skills, and then give you your basic vocabulary and things you can use to go out there and have conversations. And you'll be, you'll be surprised at how quickly you can have conversations. Um, I've already been corrupted by the conventional method. You know, so a lot of people have been training for a long time. And they have these habits like translating in their head or mispronouncing things based on the way they're spelled. Um, you know, it does take time to unlearn those habits, but you got to do it. And once again, this program is designed to help you do it. So if you're a pure beginner, you won't learn those habits. If you already do have those habits, this course will help you unlearn them and replace them with the proper habits, right? I struggle to stay consistent. I'm the worst one here, trust me. Uh, so once again, I designed the accountability team accountability program and the scheduling to help people with this. So you have all kinds of motivational forces at play that kind of get you to do the work. And once again, we had really high completion rates last time we did this. I was, I was actually pretty surprised. And so that's proof that with the right system, no matter how chaotic a person you might be, you can get things done. And I'm too busy. That might be true. You might not have time for this. In the other video, I'll talk more about what time you need to put aside for this. I also find, however, that um, a lot of the busyness question gets answered by having a proper scheduling. You know, if you don't know what you should be doing, then you're going to be doing your other responsibilities in life. And um, But if we give you a very clear, do this, it takes this much time, um, set it at this hours, and then you join your group accountability teams in those sessions, we set it up so you have to... Um, plan out what you're going to do that week with your teammates. So I find that with just a little bit of upfront thinking and planning and scheduling, even a very busy person can get in the necessary fresh practice hours to get progress in this program. Um, but it's up to you to desert, determine how much you can put into this. Uh, oh, finally, I'm bad with technology. Not to worry. I have uh, apprentices who will be working with me this time around. And one of their main responsibilities will be to make sure that 
if anyone's struggling accessing the online platform or using any of your technology, we'll work with you, get you up on a call and just help you figure it out. So whenever you get stuck, we're here to get you unstuck uh, and back into flow, all right? So what is the transformation you get in this program? If you come and you do flow school and you finish the whole thing, what can you expect to get out of it? Fluency. Um, in You might not get fluency at the very end of the program. Uh, fluency is a people you define that word in different ways. The way I define it is you're in that flow state. You enter into that conversation flow. You're able to follow along. You're able to express yourself at your level of skill. So you won't be able to do that, you know, at full mastery in all contexts, probably in a short period of time. But what we do is we unlock it. You have the routine. You now have the autonomy to go out there and just continue doing what we've been doing in this program on your own. And if you keep, if you enter into conversation flow, then you will expand your skills each time you leave, which means each time you come back in and repeat and repeat, you get better and better and better and better. And then fluency is inevitable, right? That's the idea here is I wanted to unlock you, unblock you so you can autonomously get and achieve the goals you're trying to get to. Confidence with a better accent, uh, you know, scripts, proper training and practice to enter into conversation, you'll be more confident. Instead of having that vicious cycle of being anxious and embarrassed all the time, it'll turn into a virtuous cycle and uh, you'll get more skilled, more fluent, more confident, which makes you speak even more, get more skill, and then keep flowing upwards. That's the plan. Admiration, affinity from other people. Um, so when you go out there and you speak with a really good accent, with really good language, with lots of confidence, the native speakers and the people you're speaking with will be like, oh, wow, you speak Spanish pretty well. You speak French very well, right? And that, that, that's worth something, right? It completely transforms our, our self-image, our confidence, um, gives us more opportunities to practice and relate with other people, um, especially when you have that really good accent. That's what uh, a lot of people in our last program told us, brand new beginners and they're speaking and people are like, whoa, you've only been training for a couple of weeks and you sound like that? And it's like, you know, that's a huge confidence boost uh, when people see that. So I'm looking forward to you having that same experience. Uh, inclusion, like I said in my Mexico story, going from a place of being alienated and separate from the group to being you know, invited to parties, being able to be with the family, be part of the culture and the society, that is really what it's all about for me is being able to become part and belong in this foreign culture and also be connected to the individuals within that culture. Strengthen bonds, establish new bonds, and um, really that's the meaning of life for me, is just being more connected to people. And especially when we're going to a whole different culture or maybe we have people coming into our culture and having them be included and making connections with them. Um, that's why I do the work that I do. For me, training up your skills, turning you into a mimic, sending you off into, into conversations, entering in the flow, the whole upshot of all that is more people more closely connected, which our world is in sore need of at this current moment in our history. So that's what I got for you. That is what Flow School promises to offer you. Um, check out the next video for more detailed explanation of what we're doing there. And I hope this, though, was very useful to you to understand from a more top level, um, broad strokes, what we're about here in Flow School. And I hope you will join us this time around for summer 2021. All right, thanks for watching.